For the next 24 hours, every single thing that I eat will have one special ingredient, caviar. This is a $3,000 tin of caviar and I'm going to be eating it for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and even dessert. But not only that, we're also going to find out why caviar is so expensive and what it tastes like, starting with the most classic preparation in a taste test at 7 a.m. First, we obviously have the caviar itself. It comes in this metal tin and is vacuum packed, so it can last a few weeks in the fridge if you don't open it. Next, we have this little contraption, which is basically used to help wedge the tin open. And lastly, it comes with this spoon, which is a mother of pearl spoon. Yes, this is made from actual pearl. Now, the reason we use a mother of pearl spoon is because metal can react with the caviar and leave a little bit of a metallic taste in the caviar itself. Caviar can pick up flavors really, really easily. We're going to use Use this tool right here to try to open up this caviar tin. Oh, and here is the big reveal. Oh my goodness. Honestly, I can't believe that I'm holding this right now. I'm a little bit nervous to drop it. The color is beautiful. It's almost golden, which is pretty rare for caviar, I feel like. A lot of caviar tends to be on the darker side, but this one actually shimmers in the light beautifully, and it's actually pretty golden. Now, when you want to taste caviar, there are two super classic ways of trying it out. The first is what we call a caviar bump. Quite literally, just take the caviar with a spoon, put it on the back of your hand, and eat it. This really just allows you to taste the caviar by itself with nothing added in. Such a treat. I am I'm so, so fortunate to be tasting and holding and trying this caviar. Caviar bumps are a pretty trendy thing nowadays, but there's actually a lot of history behind them. Back in the day, fishermen would bring their haul of caviar and allow vendors to actually taste the caviar by doing these caviar bumps. It was a really quick way for them to be able to get the taste, texture, and flavor, which would inform whether or not they actually buy the caviar. Nowadays, you see sort of a similar thing with bluefin tuna, where they actually take out a little piece of that tuna so you you can see the marbling, the texture, the color before you decide to buy it or not. This particular caviar is very creamy. You can see all of the individual eggs, which means that visually it is absolutely gorgeous and it also has a slight nutty finish to it. The second classic way of trying caviar is with blinis, which are basically mini pancakes, creme fraiche, and chives. Honestly, the recipe to make blinis is pretty similar to regular pancakes, so we had to step it up by making buckwheat blinis, which use buckwheat flour for a little bit more added depth of flavor, and we also whipped up some egg whites and folded it into the dough to make it really nice and fluffy. Then you just cook them in a pan like you would normal pancakes, and then you top it with creme fraiche for a little bit of creaminess, the caviar itself, and of course, a little bit of chives for that grassy, garlicky note to finish. So here it is, our first official dish made with caviar. Mmm. Not to toot my own horn here or anything, but those buckwheat blinis are pretty freaking good. The creme fraiche adds a bit of that creaminess, adds almost a little bit of tang. The buckwheat blinis are soft and fluffy and just carry this so well. The chives are like the little garnish on top. It's just such a magical bite. And with a caviar that special, it's mwah, chef's kiss. This is a crazy way to start a morning, but we still have breakfast, lunch, dinner, and even dessert still to come. So for breakfast, we had to make everybody's favorite breakfast food, scrambled eggs. Actually, I made a video comparing Gordon Ramsay to Thomas Keller to Heston Blumenthal's scrambled egg recipes to finally find out which one is the best out of the three, so go check out that video. But today, we are making scrambled eggs with caviar. It's a great pairing because not only do you get to say you're eating eggs on eggs, but the natural creaminess of scrambled eggs goes really nicely with the creaminess of caviar. The one thing that scrambled eggs lacks, though, is a little bit of texture, a little bit of that crunch. So what we're doing today is we're actually taking some chicken skin off the chicken. We're baking them in order to get them nice and crispy, and then we're chopping them up really finely so we can almost add them like a chicken skin crumble into our scrambled eggs. It's eggs on eggs with a little bit of chicken mixed in. We put it into this adorable little eggshell, and voila, breakfast is served. All right, time to try our scrambled eggs with caviar and fried chicken skins. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Wow. It's a great combination. It's even got that creme fraiche and chives that we had from that classic combo at the beginning, but the fried chicken skin really comes through and just gives it that little bit of crunch. And the caviar pairs nicely with it because you have a little bit of saltiness from the chicken skin, but you also have a little bit of brininess from the caviar. I'll rate this one a 7 out of 10. A really solid combo. Nothing really mind-blowing or anything that you haven't necessarily seen before. What? You didn't think I was going to eat the rest of the scrambled eggs? Come on, it's my breakfast.
Before we make lunch, a lot of you are probably wondering, what actually is caviar? Well, to put it simply, caviar is fish eggs, specifically fish eggs from sturgeon. It's a really large fish that basically is like a dinosaur because of how long ago it dates back to. It's also very expensive, and we'll get into why that is a little later on, but for context, a single ounce of really premium caviar can go up to $500 per ounce. Today, we're using an Imperial Ocetra caviar from Tsar Nikolai, which costs around $420 dollars an ounce. It's the most premium grade that this company offers and is an absolute delicacy. You see high-end caviar on the menus of most fine dining restaurants nowadays, and a lot of people like using them because of that texture, that flavor, and just how beautiful it looks on a plate as well. Now, I was actually thinking about what to make for lunch. Could have been a salad, could have been a nice sandwich, but no. no. We are going to make my favorite lunch of all time, which is tacos. But not just any tacos. Tacos with caviar and lobster. Because why not? So tacos and I go way back. I actually really didn't like them growing up. I was a very picky eater. I wouldn't eat any of my foods sort of mixed. So I didn't really start eating tacos until late in my college life. But ever since I went to Mexico City and literally ate like 50 tacos within three days, I was absolutely hooked. And now it's one of my favorite foods of all time. I actually make tacos from scratch pretty often, including making my own masa, rolling out the tortillas. It's a pretty regular thing here. So if you want to learn how to make those and you want to see a video on it, definitely let me know what tacos I should make. Anyways, if breakfast was about getting the pairing just right, this dish is all about decadence. We're taking the humble tortilla, loading it up with some buttery, tender, beautiful baked lobster tail, a little bit of homemade spicy coleslaw, and then whacking some more caviar on top. But once everything is assembled, it is time for a taste test of our glorious tacos. Here is lunch for today. We have our lobster taco, caviar, a little bit of uh, gochujang coleslaw, a little bit of cilantro lime aioli. Should be a pretty good bite. I'm, I'm excited to try this. Oh, mm. cilantro lime aioli is really creamy and smooth. The lobster is really buttery and tender. The caviar on top is a nice briny finish to the dish. This is a really, really nice taco. I, I've never made something like this. I'd probably give our lunch an eight out of 10. I feel like it's a little bit more creative than our, than our breakfast, but there's not heaping mounds of caviar on this like there was at breakfast and what there probably will be at dinner. So we've done the classic taste test, a beautiful breakfast, a decadent lunch. Now it's time for some fast food for dinner. We're making a fried fish sandwich with a caviar tartar sauce. Now this one is not my invention. There's actually a restaurant in LA called Daybird, which has a fried fish sandwich with caviar tartar sauce that sells it for about $80. But we have one of the most premium caviars on the face of the earth. So I figured we would make a sandwich that's even more expensive than that Daybird sandwich. The key to a great sandwich in my mind is the buns. If you start with a great homemade bun, you're gonna be in good shape for your sandwich overall. So before breakfast earlier today, I actually wound up making my own brioche dough, which I later turned into some buns. Afterwards, we made our tartar sauce from scratch, and of course, we mixed in a little bit of caviar. And to finish this off, of course, you have to have your fried fish. So once we've got our beer-battered fried fish, our homemade caviar tartar sauce, and our buns, we assembled them all together to hopefully make the most expensive fish sandwich ever. Also, we actually added in even more caviar on top to make it an even more expensive sandwich. This clocked in at around $200. A crazy dinner for sure. Here is our dinner done. Fried fish sandwich with uh, tartar sauce and more caviar. Just look at how much caviar there is on this thing. Oh my God. Oh. The fish is really nice and flaky. The tartar sauce gives it a little bit of tang. The caviar gives it that little bit of brininess, a little bit of that nuttiness that we got earlier on. I'll have to give it an 8.5. This is phenomenal. Wow, 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 wow. Before we head into dessert to finish up the day, why is caviar so expensive? Well, it turns out that there are two ways of getting caviar. The first is by harvesting it from wild sturgeon. The problem is, is there's not actually many of them and we wanna be cognizant of not endangering them further. But also they just take a long time to mature. So you have to wait a long time before you actually can get any caviar. The second way of getting caviar is by actually farming sturgeon, which is what we have here. This caviar is from Tsar Nikolai, which actually farms sturgeon just two hours hours north of where I live, which is a much more sustainable practice in getting caviar. But it is expensive. You need a lot of equipment and technology that is specifically designed for breeding sturgeon in order to make this effective. For example, they've worked with places like UC Davis to create an aquaponics filtration system just for this. And then once you get the caviar, it's delicate and finicky and the processing, packaging, and shipping of it all requires a lot of attention to detail, which is how you wind up getting a $3,000 tin of caviar. So I figured because of all the work that 
actually went into getting this caviar, we'd honor the last bit that we have by putting it on one of my all-time favorite desserts, the Basque cheesecake. I love to cook, but I hate to bake. And if you also hate to bake, the Basque cheesecake is probably the simplest, most delicious tasting thing that you can make at home. The only major ingredient here is Philadelphia cream cheese. No, literally, that's the exact brand that you need to use. Mind you, the Basque cheesecake was invented in Northern Spain, and the original recipe says to use Philadelphia cream cheese, which is nuts in my mind. But you put a mind-boggling amount of it in along with a few other ingredients, mix it all together, pour it into a cake pan, and bake it until that top becomes a really nice brown. You can take it as far as you want. Sometimes I'm feeling more of a really dark, almost burnt crust. Other times I'll keep it a little bit lighter. Here, we're not messing about. We're going to just put a ton of caviar on top of this Basque cheesecake because one, the cheesecake itself is sweet and the caviar is a little bit salty, a little bit nutty. And two, it's almost 1 a.m. So it's probably time to wrap this up. Guys, I think that might be the best one we've had. The cake itself is obviously sweet, but it's also creamy and fluffy and light. And the caviar is a little bit briny, a little bit earthy, and it's a really nice contrast between the two. It's almost like when you have chocolate with sea salt. I mean, this is blowing my mind. One more bite, one more bite. That one I'm going to give a perfect 10 out of 10. What could be better? That was insane. Delicious, but truly insane. I've dined at some of the best restaurants in the world, and even I don't think that I've spent this much money on food in a single day. If you want to see more of these kinds of videos, definitely subscribe. Definitely let me know what I should make next, what I should experiment with. But for now, I'll see you later.